How's the family this morning? Missed you guys last week. It's good to be back, and we had a good time uh, venturing out of town for a little bit and getting a little rest uh, out of town, but it was a great time. We just missed being here when we we're gone and miss you guys a lot. So, you know, we went and saw this guy, Dave Stammy is his name. We went and saw him one time over in a place in Fort Worth, uh, Saginaw, over in that area. He uh, played uh, a lot of folk music right there in this uh, home. Actually, it's a great big old beautiful house uh, that a few of us from here in the church went over and listened to him play. And he's got some great messages in his uh, music. And uh, I, when I heard this, I thought, you know, that's where many of us will find ourselves today. Uh, maybe many of you here today know the place and the feeling he's talking about. Um, in this song, the happy place for this person is in the West. He talks about everything to do with the West, but it applies to a lot of us right here in our small communities, right here in Texas, uh, you know, that uh, we can relate to many of these places. How many of you remember hearing the phrase, I'm going to my happy place? Have you ever heard that before? You know, I'm going to go to my happy place. I'm going to get away from it all. And that, that was a saying in the time. And where that happy place is for most people is a place where they can find contentment. Where they can find contentment, they can find joy, they can find peace right there in that spot. And that everybody's is different, I, I understand that. But, you know, that's one of the things that uh, sometimes we seek is to get away from everything else. Terry and I just went to Branson. We love going to Branson, Missouri. We go up there, we enjoy just the, the mountains that are there, and we enjoy the atmosphere. This, you know, Branson's a small town, but it's a big town. But it just feels small. It just feels... Uh, a different. So we like to go there and get away every once in a while and enjoy that area there. But it's, it's you know, any place that you have, anywhere that you personally feel like that you can get away and you can just kind of find contentment, find peace and relax. You know, Jesus even got away. Jesus said a lot of people think his happy place was on, on the mountains praying and all that. But Jesus' happy place was with people. That was really his happy place. He found contentment when he was mixed with people and he was with the people that that he loves so much. So each one of us have a different place that we, we go to to find that. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. We're going to pick up there this morning if you would join me there. I pray you brought your Bible with you. I always say I want you to see God's Word, not mine. Philippians chapter 4, begin at verse 12. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, the Apostle Paul speaking here, says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul learned through all his trials and all his problems. And if, if many of us know Paul and know what all he went through and the trials and things he went through, we know he's been through a lot. But he had learned to find contentment no matter where he was because he made the best of it. You know, the Roman imprisonment that they had in the day, they were brutal. Being in a Roman prison is not somewhere you wanted to be back in the day. And there was no concern at that time for prisoners' comfort at all. They could care less. No plan for meals or Medicare or medical care, I'm sorry. And no concern for uh, to, to have a speedy trial. They didn't care how long you sat there. There wasn't going to be a speedy trial at all. And Paul's imprisonment in, in Sierra went on for years, years and years and years. And Paul had, uh, you know, he'd waited patiently for his freedom because he knew it was going to come or he felt like it was going to come. Though he had done nothing wrong at all, he, he still found himself in prison. And he made a personal connection with Felix the Roman governor at the time, who often, he often called Paul up to, his, to speak with him and sit with him and, and just, just talk with him. And after uh, two years, you know, um, Felix uh, was succeeded by the governor, uh, by, succeeded as governor by uh, Festus. But Felix, for some reason, even though he had a great connection with Paul and, and he loved Paul coming and talking to him, even though he had that great connection, he left Paul in prison. And he did it for a political reason. He left Paul in prison because he wanted to grant favor to the Jews. So it was all a political thing that Paul, even though this guy liked him, he put all that to the side and he said, hey, you know, I'm just going to leave him there because it's going to make me look better in the eyes of the Jews. 
And his suffering continued. It, it didn't stop. But it's so powerful if we think about it when a person like Paul steps up to teach us life lessons about contentment. If we can look at Paul and all his trials and think, how does this guy find contentment and all that? How can we not do so? If he can be content in this level of agony that he was going through every day, maybe he does have something he can teach us. Maybe we need to study and read a little bit more about Paul. And I, th I believe we can all agree that our happy place is not necessarily a perfect place. Maybe not even a place where there are no problems whatsoever. You know, it's sometimes it's even though you find yourself in a place where you think you can find contentment, you're going to have some problems follow you there if you drag them there with you. But it is a place that we can go to where we don't allow those problems to overwhelm us. Everyone's happy place that they seem to go to where they find contentment in their life will most likely look a little different than someone else's. It does. Everybody has their own their own thoughts and their own place that they want to go to. They want to get away. You know, my happy place, I'll tell you, it's right on the front of a boat fishing. That's my happy place. That surprises all of you, doesn't it? Shocked. I got it. Mr. Ken back here, I'll bet his happy place is working in his garden. Is that right, Mr. Ken? There you go. I know Joy Rickmans is sitting in a deer stand. That's where she is this weekend. And somehow she tricked Mr. Rodney in there with her. And Clint Sparks, I know where his happy place is. That's on the back of his horse. And my wife shared with me that her happy place is just walking through nature. Just a quiet time. So we all have a different place that we can go to, that we can find some joy or we can find some peace. And we find some contentment. Some of you may be thinking about your happy place right now. I know it's hard not to, where that is. And if you are, I want you to share that with us when you walk out those doors at the back when you leave here today. Share with Buster and I where your happy place is and what makes you happy. We'd like to, we'd like to hear that, wouldn't we, Buster? You bet. You grow to know people better when, when that happens, and we want to know more about you. And no matter where your happy place is today, it should be a place where you find joy and you find contentment while being there, no matter where it's at. It's an escape. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He had to escape even from the people where his happy place was to find another place where he could be still, be in prayer, and find contentment and joy right there in that place. And normally, it was talking to his father. That was his happy place. We should all understand, though, that Contentment is not about being rich. Not at all. It's not about having a bigger house or a newer vehicle. It's not even about achieving status or position in any way. It's about being satisfied right where you are. Being content in every situation. And if, as we think about our happy places and of contentment this morning... We should understand, without a doubt, there are right and wrong happy places to find contentment. People find it in drugs, found it, find it in alcohol, find it in adultery, find it in bars and clubs, find it in places that they shouldn't be. So there are wrong places that we need to go to find that contentment. You might call it your happy place, but... A happy place that cause harm or sin is the wrong place to be. Amen? So we have to make sure that we're focused on the right things. The fact is that contentment and godliness go hand in hand. They're, they go along with each other. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. First Timothy chapter 6, begin at verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. Amen. Amen. You've got to find your contentment and happiness right where you're at. You need to find joy in your life. Don't count on somebody else. Don't count on somebody else to bring you happiness and bring you joy because they will let you down every time. Don't count on that. You're going to count on somebody to bring you joy and happiness in your life. Count on the Lord. Because everyone else is going to fail you every time. 
An old man asked what had been robbed of him. What robbed him of joy the most in his lifetime? And he replied, things that never happened. Happened. Things that never happened. How many times do we get upset and worry about things that haven't even happened yet? Are not going to happen. Absolutely. How many times do we do that? That steals our joy and contentment in our lives. Because we're always worried about something that's going to happen. That sometimes never ever happens. We allow that to happen a lot. Someone cited these three keys to happiness. That we can grab hold of. One of them is called fret not. He loves you. John chapter 13 verse 1. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Fret not. Faint not. He holds you. Psalms 139 verse 10. Psalms 139 verse 10. Even there, your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. And fear not. He keeps you. Psalms 121 verse 5. I know I'm going pretty fast here. Psalms 121 verse 5. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. You know, these are promises. These are promises made to us. That, that God, he loves us so much that he wants us to have joy in our lives. He wants us to be content right where we are. But our only contentment we're going to find overall is in the, in the Lord himself. If we lean on him and search his word and believe in his promises. If we consider perhaps the greatest classical guitarist alive. Christopher Parkinson. Who appeared to have it all. He signed to an international recording deal as a teenager. Parkinson traveled across the world playing beautiful music. But by the age of 30... Having achieved all, uh, achieved all the musical success he could ever imagine, Parkinson felt empty. He was tired of touring and wanted to take a break from the rigors of associated. Parkinson ultimately decided to move to Montana and took up fly fishing as a hobby. Soon Parkinson was not only one of the greatest guitarists in the world, but also a world-class fly fisherman. With all the money and time he could ever want, and yet, despite of all his success, his life was empty. He wrote, if I arrive at a point, if I arrive at a point in your life where you have everything that you've ever wanted and thought it would make you happy, it still doesn't, then you start questioning things. It's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. At this point, Parkinson began to wonder if anything could fulfill the deep longings of his heart. Around this time, while visiting friends, Parkinson attended church. During the service, Parkinson was struck by 1 Corinthians 10, 31, which says, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Did he find contentment? Absolutely. Because he started to look at things in a different way, where contentment was really to be found. He explains, I realized there were only two things I knew how to do, fly fish for trout and play the guitar. Well, I am playing the guitar today, absolutely by the grace of God. I have a joy, a peace, and a deep down fulfillment in my life I never had before. My life has purpose. I have learned firsthand the true secret of genuine happiness and contentment. He found it in the Lord. And I'm telling you today, no matter where you search, no matter where you go, what you do, what your hobbies are, what you enjoy, what your life's like, you can find joy, peace, and contentment in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've just got to lean on him for it. To have contentment and happiness, we must have godliness first. You must have godliness first. You need to seek God first. Godliness deals with who we are. Contentment deals with what we have. Think about those two things, who we are and what we have. What we have doesn't mean anything because it's not going with us when we leave here, right? So we need to concentrate on who we are, who we reflect. The reason this is important is because we are truly going to be content 
Then our contentment begins with our relationship with God. Personal relationship with God. And this is a big miss. You know, this is one of the biggest issues I see in Christians today is they think religion is going to get them into heaven. It's not. Religion's not going to get you into heaven. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is what's going to get you into heaven. So if you think you got all this religion, you read the Bible and you know all this, that's great. I'm glad you do. But if you're doing that, then you would understand through God's word that it's that's not your religion's not what's going to get you into heaven. You've got to have that relationship. And if you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, are you going to have problems or are you going to fall? Sure, you're going to have problems and you're going to do things wrong. But you're going to be convicted when you do. When you fall down, God's going to help you up. It's not separation from God. It's just like you and your kids. When your kids do something wrong, you correct them. But you love them anyway. You never stop loving them. Kids, grandkids, you never stop that. Sometimes we may not agree with the things they do and the things they say. But we got to love them through it. Amen? That's why that personal relationship that you have with your kids is similar to what Jesus Christ wants with us. He wants to hear from us. He already knows everything we're doing. He knows what we're going to do next. But he wants to know that we know that he's there for us. And we need, he needs that relationship with us because he loves us that much. Sometimes we miss the simplest thing. So many people, even Terry's been asked several times and her response the same way. So many people go, well, what religion are you? Terry goes, I don't have a religion. I have a relationship. Amen. That's what we need to say to people because religion gets in the way, right? And the religion actually separates us from one another. But a relationship with Jesus Christ draws us closer to one another. That's why we're such a wonderful family here at the church. And said, we're able to lift one another up and love one another and care about one another. If you didn't do that, you wouldn't show up here every Sunday. I love this family. And I'm great that, grateful that I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I pray you have that same relationship. We can imagine all the happy places in our lives. But do we ever consider that our happy place act can actually start right here with our praise and worship of the Lord in his house. This can be a happy place for you. Right here with our Christian brothers and sisters, building a relationship with Jesus while seeking to be in the greatest happy place ever. That's heaven above. Amen. There's not going to be anything better than that. The Bible is pretty clear about that. In fact, the Bible tells us that the only true place of contentment will be found in heaven itself. Then we can be happy forever and content forever. Amen. Revelations chapter 21, verse 4. Let's look at it together. Revelations chapter 21, beginning at verse 4. It says, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. Amen. Amen. How can you not be happy with that? Especially looking at our world today. As we struggle to deal with the problems and burdens of this world by finding that happy place where our contentment can be, let's be sure we start every time we go to that place inviting Jesus Christ to be there with us. Many times, many times when I walked out on my boat, that's what I asked for, safety. God, ride with me. Feel me. Be there with me. You can throw in a few fish while we're at it, too. You know? <laughs> but I want him there with me, and you should, too. I think that's where we find more contentment and joy than we could ever imagine. And we know we're going to find that in heaven. Like I said, even Jesus himself has to get away 
he has to find that quiet, simple place because the Bible tells us, be still and know that I am God, right? But I think in our busy world, especially with the season coming up of Christmas and everything going on, it's rush, rush, rush. You know, we get in a hurry and we overlook the important things that Christmas is all about. Enjoy life. Quit letting life drag you down. Quit letting people put fear in your lives. Letting them dictate what your life, what you do. Enjoy your life. We're only here for a little while, right? The Bible says we're just a mist. We're gone, right? Love her. And if we're only here for a little while, let's enjoy what God has provided for us by being here. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, and there are some people that don't because they're afraid. They're afraid to make that contact with Jesus Christ. They're afraid to make that commitment to Jesus Christ because they're afraid that they'll have to change. And then people won't like them because they changed. The change is on the inside, not on the outside. The change is on how you view things, where your heart is, and, and the way you look at things. That's where the change comes. The change is far the better. And if you're afraid the way people will look at you, who cares? Let's, let's, let's be aware of what Jesus Christ thinks we look like instead of what others think we look like. Our relationships with our family and our friends will grow stronger. Are you going to have problems there? Yeah, you're going to have problems there. You're going to have problems with family. You're going to have problems with friends. I mean, every one of us got to admit, you got that one family member that you could just visit with at Thanksgiving and that's it, right? I mean, there's one out there in every, every group. You still got to love them. The Bible says you got to love them, right? Love them from a distance. Is that what you said, Buster? <laughs> but the thing is, is putting your heart in the right place right now. Right now, as we head into this season, you know, we've had some struggles in the last couple of years here. As we head into this season of Christmas, let your heart shine. Let your heart shine before others that it will reveal Jesus Christ. Show others that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And what you have, you'd want them to have also. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. We're going to close right here. You know, I've had someone say, hey, Red, sometimes your messages aren't very long. The message doesn't have to be very long if it makes a point, right? As long as we get it when we walk out those back doors, that's what's important. I pray this morning that you get it. That's most important to us. Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and demolish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, we lift this day to you. Father, thank you. Father, just for this day and this beautiful weather we have here today, Father. I thank you for each and every one here today, Father, that they took the time to come and be in praise and worship to you. I'm thankful we have a band that just opens the hearts and lifts our spirits. And Father, I thank you for your message that you provide, that you move me out of the way and they hear from you, not from me. And Father, this morning I pray that each one of us find that happy place. That each one of us find contentment, joy, and peace in our lives that we seek so earnestly each and every day. And Father, I pray that each one of us reflect that that peace and joy comes from you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace that you show upon us that we're not worthy of. Father, I pray that you be with each and every one as they leave here this morning. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.